Hello, you wonderful people. In this video, we're going to take a look how to deploy our front end project to Vercel. If we take a look at my Vercel account, I'm using a pro Vercel account, which is a $20 cost. I'll tell you the reason for that in just a minute, but you could still deploy the project for free, but there's going to be one functionality that is not going to work due to limitations that the hobby plan has. For instance, there are certain functions that are limited to 10 seconds of runtime when using the hobby plan. So you might get this function invocation timeout error, which is due to your function only has allowed 10 seconds of runtime. You could read more about the error in the documentation. There might be other causes that might trigger this error, but in a lot of cases is the fact that you are exceeding a max duration of your server functions. So if you take a look at the max duration flag, you could see all the different environments that is supported by Next.js. And if you scroll down, you're going to see the time limits that you have available for you in your plan. For instance, in a hobby plan, it is 10 seconds of execution time for functions. So when we are making a call to our summarize endpoint, where we're getting the transcript, we are summarizing the data and returning it, because we are making a call to OpenAI to create that summary, we are exceeding 10 seconds. Now there are workarounds. For instance, you could refactor the code to use streaming, but in this case, because I did want to touch on this idea of hobby versus pro, and I wanted to show you that there are certain benefits that come through upgrading to pro plan. For instance, giving you the ability to set max time duration for your functions. So that's the route that I wanted to take here because I wanted to show all the options. But as you could see here, they do have this note, function using edge runtime do not have maximum duration. The only caveat, they must begin sending a response within 25 seconds and continue streaming that response beyond that time. So this would require us to refactor our application a little bit. And this is a challenge that I think will be worthy of trying. And so after I finish up this tutorial and everything is deployed, I am going to make a follow-up blog of refactoring that part of the code base to see if we could stay within the hobby plan. But for this, uh, because in many cases, you might want to have that additional functionality. So I'm going to show you how easy it is to increase the duration of the execution time for your function when using the pro plan. But to follow along, you could still use the hobby plan. The only difference when you try to create a summary is just going to time out. But with that out of the way, let's jump right into it. As always, with each video, you're going to have the complimentary blog post that walks you through the steps. So if you don't have a Vercel account, you could check out the steps of how to create one. It's very easy. You go to the Vercel website and create your account, authorize it with GitHub, and you're ready to go. So if you watched the previous video, we have deployed our backend application to Strapi Cloud, where if you click visit the app, it will it will take you to your website and I showed you how to seed it with initial data. So if you take a look at our content manager, we have all our summaries, our test users, our global data and our home page data. And all of our permissions were already set to allow authenticated users to access our website. And finally, our code base is living in our GitHub repo. You could have separate repos for your backend and frontend. I decided to have one repo and that's what we're going to use. So before deploying a project, there's a couple of things we have to do. So the first thing is we're going to set our environmental variables. And in the previous example, we use next public strappy URL. Whenever you have next underscore public in your environmental variables, it will make this environmental variable available on the client side. Because we are not calling any functions that utilize this environmental variable from the public, everything is done server side, we're going to rename it to be called strap URL. So we're going to go to our get strap URL method and instead of next public strap URL, we're going to rename it to strap slash URL. And basically whenever you don't prepend next underscore public, whatever this environmental variable, it's not going to be available client side. So there's no risk of leaking any private data. In our case, the strap URL is a public uh, endpoint, so it doesn't matter. But again, since we're not using it client side, we're just going to go ahead and refactor to say strapy slash URL. So in our code base, let's navigate to source lib, go to utilities, and here's our get strap URL. 
I already went ahead and renamed it to strappy underscore URL instead of using next underscore public. So this is all set. And the environmental variables that we need for our front end, it's going to be our host, which we'll get after we deploy our project. This is going to make sure that our cookie is being set correctly. Are we going to set our environmental to production? Again, this is something that our cookie configuration relies on. Uh, we will need our strap URL, which I'll show you where to find it. And of course, don't forget your open AI API key. So if we take a look in our data under actions, auth actions, we're going to see that we have this cookie configuration where we send setting our max age, we are pointing to our path, and then we're going to set our domain with the URL for our deployed project, which we'll get after the initial deployment. We're setting our HTTP cookie true, and we're going to say it's secure if, if our environment is equal to production, which we're going to set via the environmental variable. And just to make sure that this configuration setting is being passed in both our register user function, for instance, where we're setting the cookie, you need to make sure that not only do you pass the cookie data, but you pass that configuration. And you also want to do the same thing in the login function, again, making sure that you are passing the configuration, because that's something that we need in order to set our cookie as HTTP only, which will make it more secure. And the last piece of the puzzle, since we're going to have our project deployed on Vercel, and we're going to point it to our deployed Strapi instance where our images are hosted, we're going to have to add an additional entry here. So I'm going to say protocol equals HTTPS. And for host name, it's going to come from our Strapi. So if you navigate to your Strapi admin, click visit app and send it into your deployed Strapi admin uh, section, you'll be able to go into media library. And if you click any of the images and copy the URL, let's go ahead and just open it in a brand new window. And you're going to see that all our media files are stored out of URL, which is the name of our project, but it's appended by .media.strappyapp.com. And this is what we need in order to point to our images. So next image doesn't complain. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that snippet. And inside my project, I'm going to go ahead and add it for host name. So now our project is all set to be deployed. So back in the Vercel admin, let's click add new. After you make all these changes that we did today, don't forget to go ahead and commit your project to GitHub. So I'm going to do git status just to check all the changes. We updated our configuration MGS file. So I'm going to do git add, say git commit message, which is going to be updated config. And I'm going to go ahead and push the changes. So we have our newly saved changes update in our repo from which we're going to deploy. You can see that I made a commitment to the front end project. So we're ready to deploy. So I'm going to go to Vercel. I'm going to click add new, click project. I'm going to select that project from my repo, which is Strapi and next deploy. I'm going to click import. And here we are going to under root directory, we're going to click edit. And we're going to point to our front end folder, which is where our Next.js project is located. And it's going to auto identify that it's a Next.js project. And then finally, we're going to go to environmental variables and we need to add our four environmental variables, which we're going to set our node environment to production. We're going to pass our strap URL and our open AI API key and host. We're going to get after the initial deploy when we have the URL of our project available. So let's do that now. So I'm going to say node environment. We're going to say it's production. Click add another one. Now we're going to get our strappy URL and you could find it. This is going to be URL where our project is deployed. For me, this is my project that's deployed. So that's what I'm going to copy. I'm going to go ahead and paste it in, click add. And finally, go ahead and add your open AI API key. So adding my open AI API key. And now go ahead and click deploy. And this is going to start your deployment process. Once your project is deployed, we're going to click on our domain and we're going to go ahead and copy it. And we're going to need that for later. Just here, I just want to show you if I open up the inspector, go to applications, take a look at cookies. 
nor is because we're not logged in. We don't have any cookies set. So I'm going to go sign in. I'm going to use our test user, test user when I click sign in. Notice nothing happens. That's because we need to add our path. So let's go ahead and do that now. So back in Vercel, going back to your project, click settings, go into environmental variables, go ahead and let's add a new one called host. And our host is going to be our URL where our project is hosted. So go ahead, click save. Now going back to deployments, click on the three dots, click redeploy, keep use existing build cache unchecked and click redeploy. Once our project gets redeployed, let's try again, going to our project here. We're gonna open up the inspector, go to applications and let's go sign in, go test user, test user password, click sign in. And now because we set our path, you should see your JWT token and you should see that it's HTTP only and it's secure. So our token is working so we could log out. And when we log out, it clears the cookie. So let's sign in again, test user, test user. And before we test our API, you want to make sure that you are using a pro account because we have to increase the limit for our execution time. So if you're on a hobby plan and you try to create a summary and you click create summary, if the API call takes more than 10 seconds, you're going to get a timeout. But because I'm using pro account, I'm able to increase the limit. If we take a look at the Next.js documentation, there's many different environments that you could choose. And if you scroll down, you could read more about the differences, but the most important difference, if you're using a hobby plan, just like you mentioned before, you're going to have some limits on your account. For instance, using the free plan, your maximum execution time for functions is 10 seconds. If you're using hobby plan and you make an API call and takes longer than 10 seconds, it's gonna time out. So in my case, I went ahead and changed the plan to pro. So what I'm able to do is to set a longer execution time. So if we go to source app into our API route on the summarized routes, you could see here I'm setting max duration to 150 seconds, which allows us to set longer execution time, allowing our API request not time out when making a call to OpenAI. This is what I decided to do in this tutorial because this was easier, but I am going to revisit this in a additional blog post where I'm going to take this part and refactor and make this response use streaming. If you take a look in their documentation, if you use edge runtime, you do not have maximum duration as long as you begin sending a response within 25 seconds and can continue streaming the response beyond that time. So this will be an excellent refactor for you to go ahead and do it. I wanted to keep the tutorial simple and I did wanna kind of showcase that there is a pro plan which gives you additional features. And what I encourage everybody is to take a look at streaming data on Vercel and take a look at some of these examples below. There's also Vercel's AI SDK, which makes the process of streaming responses much more simpler. But I just wanted to show you that both of the options exist. And in the initial case, that's what I decided to do. But with that being said, I want to say thank you so much for joining us for this tutorial series. I hope you learned a lot. And if you have any questions, stop on by Monday through Fridays, 12.30 p.m. CST at Strappy's Discord and ask any questions you have. We would love to help you. With that being said, we'll see you in the next one.